Sometimes good news just seems to come out of nowhere and the release of a new beta firmware for PlayStation 5 definitely qualifies. Sony announced the new system features in a blog post and I, along with many, received access just a couple of hours later. Once installed, it's signposted as firmware 2.0 when you boot your updated console. But yeah, bizarrely, it was firmware 2.0 for the last beta as well. Labels are not important here, but features certainly are. And there are some pretty big new additions here. Yes, folders are finally a thing for PlayStation 5, but perhaps more pertinent to Digital Foundry, 1440p display support has finally been added to the system. So let's talk about this new display option first, because on the face of it, it might seem kind of odd, right? PlayStation 4. This was a console designed primarily for 1080p televisions. PS4 Pro and PS5 for 4K or 2160p displays. So why support 1440p, an actual regression in pixel count? Well, there are a number of use case scenarios, but the primary one concerns the PC monitor market. After years of 1080p domination in the PC space, the game has finally moved on, and thank God for that. These days, by far the most popular display resolution is, you guessed it, 1440p, or more specifically, 2560 by 1440. Right now, this is the sweet spot in terms of image quality, features, and price point for PC users, with 144Hz and 165Hz support often built in as standard. Crucially, HDMI 2.0 is effectively a standard for these screens too, meaning that these displays support the TV interface and will happily lock on to an HDMI device delivering a 1440p output. And yeah, these screens typically support both 60 and 120 hertz over that interface too. When it works, it looks good, far better than 1080p, and while 4K may be preferable for PS5, it just makes sense to have the console working with as many decent displays as possible. Also, it makes sense to do any scaling within the console as opposed to leaving it to the display. The GPU will do this with no lag and likely at a higher quality level too. But what's the situation like for 1440p display owners right now using the standard PS5 firmware? Truth is, it's not a great picture, literally. But here's a quick breakdown of how things stand. Uh, first of all, some displays like the ViewSonic Elite I have can take an HDMI 2.0 4K 60Hz image, downscale it to 1440p, and generally it works fine, though ugly pixelization rules out HDR, unfortunately. However, downscaling a 4K 120Hz image isn't possible. It's just too much bandwidth for the HDMI 2.0 interface. In this scenario, I'd need to set the PS5 to 1080p. And that leads us on to the situation with other 1440p displays with an HDMI 2.0 interface. They may not accept 4K60 at all, let alone 4K120, meaning that in all scenarios, you need to set the PS5 to 1080p output. This isn't ideal because this means that a 4K game will be downscaled to 1080p by the console, then the screen will upscale it back up to 1440p. Not great. Obviously, in all scenarios, the PS5 offering a native resolution output compatible with the display is going to be the best route forward. But there's another potential scenario here, potentially intriguing. HDMI 2.0 TVs can support 4K 60Hz with no problem, but many only support 120Hz at 1080p. And in that scenario, the PS5 downscales for you. What's enticing here is that potentially on some screens you could retain 4K for 60Hz gaming but then drop back down to 1440p for 120Hz. Big upgrade over 1080p. Bearing in mind that most 120Hz modes on PlayStation 5 tend to top out at around 1440p. This is a potentially good thing, right? Well, based on the firmware beta tests I've done, I'd say that PlayStation has done a pretty good job with its 1440p support but I'd like to see some improvements and changes made before the full rollout. For most 1440p display users though, this is going to be a very, very good thing. Let's kick off by looking at how the feature works. Interestingly, Sony has added in a mandatory test function for users to see whether 1440p will actually operate correctly on your screen. 
This test cycle moves through 1440p output at 60 and 120 Hz in both SDR and HDR color modes. Once you've validated that you're getting a picture, you're then able to select 1440p output within the dashboard and you're good to go. For the final rollout of 1440p for PS5, I'd like to see some changes and improvements made. And this starts with support for VRR, or variable refresh rate. This works just fine on PS5 at 1080p or 4K, but Sony has elected not to support it at 1440p, and that's disappointing because it works on Xbox just fine. It may well be that there is some deviation from HDMI spec in allowing VRR and 1440p to run in tandem, but the point is that it is possible and therefore should be supported. In fact, I've got a bit of a pro tip for you. Some 1440p screens may not seem like they're working at all with your PS5 in its new 1440p mode. We noted this behavior with an LG 27GL850. However, go into the menus on your monitor, turn off FreeSync support and it should work. Not ideal though, is it? Ideally, FreeSync should just operate as it always has. However, this particular screen also possesses an issue that many monitors have. Its spec limits FreeSync support to just 100 Hz over HDMI 2.0, not the full range, not 120. So perhaps compatibility issues are part of Sony's decision here. But ultimately, I do feel that VRR should be supported because while this screen can't handle it, many can. The next change I'd like to see concerns support for HDMI 2.0 TVs. Earlier, I talked about this best of both worlds scenario for this specification of television. Full 4K for 60Hz gaming, 1440p for 120Hz. Not all HDMI 2.0 TVs support 1440p 120, but the well-regarded Samsung NU8000 is one such screen, and Alex owns it. So here's a look at how this new firmware operates with this TV. Kicking in the 1440p test mode, well, we hit a problem straight away. There's no image on the TV. But on the right there on CRT, which is running PlayStation 5 through a capture card, well, you can see that it's working. So selecting yes, the test mode moves on to 1440p 120 output, and curiously, the NU8000 does work here. But the average user will fail at the 60Hz test, meaning that they're totally locked out of 1440p, whether at 60 or 120Hz. If this happens for you when the 60Hz test fails, press right on your controller and then press X to select yes and blindly move to the 120Hz test. Select yes again and you'll find that 60Hz games will run at 4K and when a game switches to 120Hz, you'll down res to 1440p. To make sure this happens, I'd suggest running the resolution mode on your PS5 set to auto. But yeah, 4K60, 1440p120, the best of both worlds for HDMI 2.0 TVs, but on the NU8000 at least, you'll need to kind of hack your way in. Sony could fix this all very easily by changing the 1440p test sequence to put 120Hz first before 60 hertz. Now this feature may well just work fine on many HDMI 2.0 TVs, but I'd suspect a whole lot of Samsung screens of a certain vintage are gonna be affected, just like the NU8000. But if working correctly, as I said, this uh, potential setup is better, I think, than the Xbox 1440p implementation. Set your Xbox to 120 hertz and it will run everything at 120 hertz meaning that HDMI 2.0 sets like the NU8000 can run 1440p 120 just fine, but this means that for 60Hz gaming, you'll be getting a downscaled image requiring you to change at the dashboard level. With the setup for PS5, when it's fully working that is, you're getting the best possible output resolution automatically switching in for both 60Hz and 120Hz gaming. So now we know how to set up 1440p and what the compatibility is like. So what does it actually do exactly? Well, reducing output resolution on the dashboard won't affect game performance, to be clear. It's a scalar-only option. But what about image quality? The Sony blog post describes how the console outputs native 1440p, but are we talking about just a 1440p signal or will games that natively render at 1440p output display a pure 1440p one-to-one -one pixel map? Truth is, it's a little complicated. First of all, to test this, we need to find a game that outputs 1440p natively and preferably with no anti-aliasing whatsoever. 
The jaggier the image, the better. Well, that's not easy, right? But if we dip into the PS4 Pro library, Star Ocean, the last hope on PS4 Pro, actually offers users the chance to select from a range of resolutions. And yes, you can get an image with no anti-aliasing whatsoever from this game. Image quality is razor sharp, suggesting that yes, a native 1440p game output is possible. And it looks crystal clear. If we zoom in really close and place pixels into a native resolution grid, well, there it is. No scaling artifacts. It's 1440p, clearly. However, in our tests, this ultra clean 1440p output isn't always a given. PUBG on PS4 Pro also renders at a locked 1440p. Gameplay here with TAA looks absolutely fine, but are we getting a clean end-to-end -end 1440p? TAA tends to disappear on camera cuts, the first frame after a cut generally having no anti-aliasing at all. When we repeat the zoom, in this case, the pixels aren't razor sharp, indicating that there is some scaling going on. Based on this and other tests, I'd contend that if a game developer is giving a pure 1440p image, uh, to the output of the GPU, 1440p is what you'll get on your 1440p display. However, if a developer composites a 1440p frame buffer with other elements like a 4K hub, for example, or if a game supports dynamic resolution scaling, you'll likely get an ever so slightly softer image as a 4K image is being sent from the GPU then downscaled. Do I think it's a problem? Not really, and I suspect Xbox operates in the same way on many titles. There's something else to bear in mind too. Sometimes 1440p isn't really 1440p, which might sound like total nonsense, but allow me to explain. This is Demon Souls remake on PlayStation 5 in its 60 FPS performance mode. This renders internally with a native 1440p frame buffer. So you might be thinking that the logical thing for the console to do would be to output the game at native 1440p to your 1440p display. However, this is ignoring the concept of TAA upscaling, where data from prior frames is injected into the one currently being rendered in order to increase detail. In this scenario, we're seeing reconstruction up to 4K and then downscaling to your 1440p screen. So in actuality, it's a net win in terms of image quality. So yeah, whether super sampling down from a well upscaled image or indeed simply downscaling 4K, I'd say the results look pretty good. Another plus point is that 1440p120 can also be captured via an HDMI 2.0 capture card. So in John's recent Bright Memory Infinite video, we actually had a 120Hz head-to-head performance analysis video. And for the first time ever, we were able to capture both PS5 and Xbox Series X at 120Hz at 1440p resolutions. Bearing in mind that most 120Hz gaming modes kind of tend to top out at this resolution, I'd say this is pretty good news for content creators as well. So that's the score with PlayStation 5's 1440p support. Maybe it's not an absolute game changer for the console in the living room, but there are applications for improved 120Hz image quality on select HDMI 2.0 screens, though maybe the 1440p test sequence should be tweaked as I've described earlier. Coupling the PS5 with an office or bedroom based 1440p PC monitor though, overall, this is a very nice feature to have. It makes the process far smoother, easier, and delivers improved quality. It's a very good thing. But again, it doesn't quite feel like the complete article. VRR support going AWOL is a disappointment. Um, look, it works on Xbox, so bottom line is, I'd expect it to work on PlayStation as well. So that's the end of the video, and you know what comes next. Like, subscribe, share, ring the bell for those notionally instant notifications. And yeah, please do consider the DF Supporter Program for high quality video downloads, access to the team via our brilliant Discord community, early access to content, bonus materials, and much, much more. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching.